we are the girls who gab i'm cassie and i'm bailey and today we are going to be talking about bailey went back to work in the restaurant industry yep so we're gonna kind of talk through like your experience going back since covid stuff and then um I just want to jump right into four ones outs and stuff. But first, what are you drinking? I am drinking Arvon Fizz sticks for some energy. And then I am also drinking like a collagen in here. Nice. Yeah. I'm finishing the, the very end of my protein shake this morning. I yeah. use Arvon's vanilla protein mix with like, I put mixed berries in here, half of a banana. I think that was actually pretty much it. And then, like, obviously, I want the greens that I'm using right now is from Mari, from Mari Fitness, and it's um, sweet, so that tasted really good. Oh, so you add it to it? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and, yeah, so then that way I don't have to, like, try to drink it. Do it by itself. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I know, I saw your post. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's just, it still doesn't taste good, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely does taste better than the Arbon one. I will say that. <laughs> oh yeah, but did you get the Arbon one? No, no, because it was oh, sold yeah, out here with me, huh? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I know. That's why. It, that's why I was like, well, ours doesn't have a sweetener though. Mm-hmm. It's a natural stevia, so hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I can't add it to my shakes; it ruins it. Not a fan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The one that I'm drinking is also a berry, so it has the greens supplement. So it's like a full day serving of greens. And then it also has an antioxidant serving of some sort. In oh, it. So that's cool. Got it. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Do you have a pour one out? My pour one out is a uh, political. Uh-huh. Because yep. The whole world is falling apart as we all know. So um, yeah, it's, it's my pour one out is like what's going on with like, not, not the protests themselves for the Black Lives Matter movement, but just the fact that we're here again, still, um, like struggling with the fact that things suck. Yeah, Um, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's like, and then like Trump posted his stupidity and (laughs) like, I just, I can't. The whole thing, I can't. Um, But I'll get to my cheers to that which is also related, but let's have you go first. Well, so my poor one out is the same thing. Just the fact that yet again, another thing has happened in 2020. And this thing that happening is really heartbreaking. I was telling Cassie that a couple of days ago, I had like a complete meltdown. Like my daughter just isn't like, I mean, anyone who has kids and, and human beings in general just aren't living their full lives right now. And mm-hmm. I think that really sucks. And it really hit me. I like woke up from a terrible dream, nightmare, and I just like woke up crying. Those dreams when you wake up and you're already crying, that was me that morning. Just like, this isn't what I wanted for her and it sucks. And the things that are happening like right now, the Black Lives Matter movement, it's just crazy that it's still a thing and it just blows my mind because my perspective on it is just not negative. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy and that's that. Yeah, if, if you guys who are listening are interested in finding some resources, my whole uh, my whole Instagram all week long has been only related to Black Lives Matter stuff. So I've posted and made a highlight that has a lot of like educational information on it. And then I also recommend a bunch of different people. But the main one that I'm going to recommend um, to follow is named Bowties and Books on Instagram. And I think that's her Twitter name too. Um, and she's been, she's in Minnesota and she's been going to a bunch of the protests throughout the week. So she has a bunch of like protesting quotes. She has just a bunch of information on everything that's going on. And I think her, her, um, not channel, her Instagram is a good place to start if you're interested yeah. in seeing some like firsthand account stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think by the time you mentioned that right now your page is all about, you know, the the movement and things, by the time this episode, like, airs, it'll be already, um, well, on podcast, we'll still be muted. So Cassie and I both muted our Instagram page. I don't know about your Twitter page. Um, So we're doing the, uh, one month is in June, June 1st to the 7th. And so we're not really posting anything except for anything that has to do with the movement we're posting about. So, Mm -hmm. um, but by the time this comes out on YouTube, that'll be over with, but 
Yeah. Yes. But hopefully we'll still be maintaining some you focus. Know, uh, on a mix matter. rather than just mm -hmm. one. Yeah. No, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. with that, my cheers to that is that I went to a protest this yes. week. Talk all about it. It was really cool. Um, well, you did. It was a different time. It wasn't just walking the streets. Like, what did you do? Yeah. So, okay. Well, the, it, it's kind of like a weird cheers to that because it starts out kind of not great. But <laughs> basically, I went to this. Um, it was supposed to be like a meditation sit-in protest um, in an area of the city that I live in, which is really well known for this like yoga in the area like situation. So anyways, I go there. And I ended up going by myself. I couldn't find anyone to go with me, but I was like, I really was feeling like I wasn't doing enough, just like sitting at home. And I also like, <laughs> I'm a person who doesn't like rule following when the rules are dumb. So I was just like mm -hmm. mad that all of these rules are being put in place and I'm sitting here following them. And I'm like, this doesn't feel right. So yeah. I decided to go. And initially when I got there, uh, I, I kind of felt like uncomfortable being there. Um, not because I was alone, although maybe that was like a part of it, but, but part of it was just like, it didn't feel like anyone was there for a reason. Like it, it felt very much like people were just hanging out in small groups with their friends. And I was just like, there's no like, it speaker. Right with you. yeah. And they, they yeah. weren't like, maybe it just wasn't very organized. I don't know. But like, it just didn't, it didn't feel like we were there to protest. Do you right. know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. So it, I thought maybe that where I was sitting was pretty far away from like where the the leaders of this protest were. So I got up and I went over to like where the, they had like a, a memorial out, um, which had like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey. But then they also had a bunch of people who had been killed by the police in our city as well. And they had a bunch of statistics about our police and things like that. So I went and took some pictures of that. That was really cool. And then I ended up sitting over there a little bit closer so that I could hear if they were going to do anything. Yeah. And at one point they did have us get our phones out and I thought like, okay, we're gonna do something like together. But then they were just like, don't forget to sign petitions and donate. And I'm like, well, yeah, I've been doing that already. Like, I wanted to do something here right now. Right. So as I'm, like, kind of sitting here, like, kind of frustrated with what I was experiencing, another group of people came and were, like, in the same area but towards the other side from where the leaders were. And they started chanting and doing, like, a protest of their own actively doing things okay. yeah so they were chanting they had signs and they were like um interacting the the area where we were at is right on a main street okay. um and so they were interacting with the cars so in a good way the cars would like pass by and like honk in support and like put in their support. fists out and then they would start clapping and like things like that were happening so at some point i decided to just get up and go over there there was also a woman from that um group that was like walking down the sidewalk where I was sitting near. And so as she would walk by, everyone around me, including myself, would start chanting with her. But the second that she walked back the other way, everyone would stop and just continue on their conversations. And I was like, this is not mm, comfortable. I yeah. don't like it. So yeah. I ended up going over there and chanting with them and stuff for like uh, 45 minutes or so. And then I did end up wanting to leave before the curfew um, like started. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, it was like starting at six. So I walked back to my car around 530. I also ended up my mom called me and like, I felt weird talking to her about like my day in the middle. Well, you were currently still in your day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like in the middle of a protest. It felt weird. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I walked over to my car and then I, I drove by the protesters so that I could also do the honking and the, pro the, the fist thing and, and the all things. that. Yeah. And show my support. So the way that I had driven, it was like away from home. So as I pass by like all the busy area, I go to like go up one street and head towards my house. And what really like gave me chills that day was, so the whole time that I was out there, there was no police presence at, at all. Like I didn't see one okay. single cop. So yeah. I drive by them, the protesters honk in my support, blah, blah, blah. And then I pass like maybe a few streets up 
to get away from like the busyness and then go up one block over and there are like I swear I counted seven vehicles with like three to four cops each just like hanging out I would like venture waiting. to guess waiting for the curfew to start so they could yeah. start whatever they were gonna do um yeah. I didn't read anything from like the news about that protest like getting shut down oh, or anything. like that night so yeah so mm-hmm. I don't know um if anything came of that but like ooh, it, it was creepy so yeah I didn't mean to end my cheers to that in such a weird note but it was really like inspiring and very like um it just felt really good to like be able to say that I also went to pro- a protest yeah I love that I'm so glad you got to experience that mm-hmm. yeah oh I'm jealous what about you? I could have gone. Um, my choose to that. Um, I don't know. It's a little, that's a, that one's a little rough for me right now, just because there's not really a lot of cheers going mm-hmm. on right now for me. Like, there's just a lot of bad stuff going on. And then my work, my work, I mean, that's what this episode is about. So we'll get into that. That's still a little rough. I wouldn't necessarily call it a choose to that yet. Mm-hmm. I'm blessed to be working. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are still qualifying for... I am still qual. I get, you know what? That was a good point. I guess that would be my choice to that, that I'm still qualifying um, under that amount for UI, for unemployment. So that is, yeah, that's really great. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, that system's kind of tricky. So it's been rough having to count my tips and track it and do all those things. Yeah, so, yeah. and make sure. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Because that's, that's it. it. So you can change. So that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. One good. positive note. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. Amelia, I guess I can say another one is that Amelia, now that I'm working, is getting to see her grandparents, my parents, now every weekend because they're her babysitter on the weekends. So so that's super exciting. She's mm-hmm. she's so stoked. All week, she's like, okay, so <laughs> Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> Aw, she's so cute. I know. Um, adorable. Off topic. But we are going to look at, like, three houses on Sunday. Nice. Yeah, so that's exciting. See, that's not even a cheers to that because, like, it's exciting that I'm house hunting, but it's very stressful. Yeah. Stressful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel the same way about that other thing that I'm still waiting for. I know. I haven't. I was actually going to ask you about that. But so wait. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, no. I know you don't want to on here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll okay. talk about it later. Absolutely. Okay, let's get into the topic for the day. So, you went back to work. Yes, I went back to work a week ago now. Mm-hmm. I just got scheduled two shifts, a Friday and a Saturday, and it was stressful to say the least. <laughs> and you're a server at a restaurant, a yes, fine dining. I'm a server at a fine dining restaurant. Um, very stressful. Like, my mindset going into it, I was very stressed because um, – you know, I just knew the whole dynamic was going to change. Like a lot of people that come into our restaurant, especially in the, the location that my store is at. Um, you, we just have the, the type of clientele that we get, like they, they come in, some of them are very demanding. A lot of them are regulars and are there very often. Um, so I just was worried going in that I knew things were going to be different. I was scared because I didn't know how different they were going to be. I knew that when people came in, they wanted things done a certain way. People come into finding that fine dining restaurants. They love to have their food boxed up. They love to have you decrumb their table. They love those certain steps that we need to take. I knew weren't going to happen anymore. So I was curious to see how that was going to change the guest experience. So Mm -hmm. that was very scary. Um, But so last, when I started last Friday, First of all, Cassie and I were supposed to record last Friday, mm-hmm. and then that didn't happen, and mm-hmm. then we were supposed to, <laughs> and then it kept going like a day and a day when we were supposed to record, and I like, I couldn't do it. I was having like a like mental breakdown, because I, I legit had a huge anxiety attack on Friday before I went into work, and that's why I couldn't record. I couldn't get myself to do anything, and it was like, I don't get anxiety attacks that bad to where like I'm shaking and like I can't breathe and my asthma starts acting up and it was just nonsense I'm like going into work and they have to ask us questions like what's your temperature shortness of breath I'm like yes but it has nothing to do with COVID I promise 
<laughs> oh, it was stressful. It was stressful. Mm -hmm. So when did you find out that you were going to be going in on Friday? I literally found out Wednesday or Thursday mm -hmm. prior to that, that Friday. But something had happened before that, right? You had gotten a call previously to like be ready. Yeah. So I got a call, I would say, shoot, was that one week or two weeks before my actual first day? I think it was about a week and a half before my first day. And from the general manager saying like, hey, you know, this county has already released the stay home order and some of our locations are already open. Um, they opened within 24 hours. So I'm just calling back to see if you'll be ready to work when time, when the time comes, I said, yes, let them know my availability. You know, nothing's changed. Um, which was kind of stressful when I told him my availability, cause it's not like during this, you know, pandemic and this quarantine that I all of a sudden don't have a daughter and have to have childcare. He asked for my availability. I told him and he was like, well, I might need you in the mornings. And I'm like, well, I don't have a sitter still. Like, it didn't change anything. I, I get that you need me. You can ask if I can work a day, but that's just not, don't schedule me because that's not a thing. Like, nothing yeah. really changed for me there. And he got frustrated. So then our conversation ended, and I didn't hear from him for a week. But I knew that our restaurant was open. It was just weird. I was like, well, crap. Did I screw things up? Like, it's not my fault and all this. And so I was kind of stressing about that. And then finally, last minute, I got told that it's time to work. Mm -hmm. So um, they didn't do a very good job about informing us what was going on and, you know, what was to be expected. Um, I mean, heck, they let people know two days prior that they need to come to work. And mm -hmm. so um, they, the only thing that they told us was, we will be providing gloves. Um, you need to bring your own mask. That's and such and such. This can't be on it, blah, blah, blah. And that was it. There was no other information about you know, what the new menu looks like. Not that we got brand new items, but we did like minimize our menu. Prices changed dramatically. So it was like people were going in completely blind to what was going to be happening. And so I think that's what stressed me out the most. I was just like, I don't like going into a situation not like knowing zero, mm -hmm. zero things. And that's what yes. I walked into. So yeah. yeah. So, so you go in and you were like stressed out that first day. So then like, mm -hmm. what was your experience the first night on the floor as far as like the, the protocols and stuff? Like we'll get into customers in a minute. Cause I want to go right. through that too. Yeah, but like, me too. as me far too. as like walking in and not knowing what the changes were, like, how was that? It was, let's just say that my stress was perfect for what happened because there was a reason to stress out basically is what I'm saying. So we went in, you know, it was just kind of a quick breakdown of, you know, as each server came in or bartender or whatever, quick breakdown on what was to be done, how to wipe down your table, you know, how to wipe down the salt and pepper shakers, when to remove your gloves and get new gloves, you know, don't take your mask off and all that. But it was really quick and it wasn't very organized. Like he kind of like they told us in a jumble and, or as another person walked in, like he would start over. I guess I could say, I just expected there to be a meeting and for everyone to be there for us to be shown how to do certain things. Cause I mean, it's already one weekend and there's 10 different ways that servers are like, Oh no, you don't do it like that. You do it like this. Oh no, you don't have to do that for 90 seconds. You got to do it like that. It's like, it's so, I wish there was just one meeting where everyone was told, the same thing at the same time, but on the same, on the same. Or even thing, an I email it. of it. Like, yeah, exactly. Or just like pictures of, I mean, come on, they send pictures of new plating and new food all the time. I would love just pictures and maybe a PowerPoint on how to wipe down a table. You know, if you're taking it that seriously, then it should be done. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there was a lot of things that, um, yeah. So he would just did, did a quick walk through, through the restaurant and then, and then that was it. Okay, go. And it's, yeah, and, and the most stressful part is that they also didn't tell us, besides a lot of things, is that we weren't going to have a busser, we weren't going to have a host, we weren't going to have a runner or an expo, there was only X amount of servers and two bartenders, and that was it. And so the tip process was thrown up, which we'll get into that, like, later towards we go through my whole shift, mm -hmm. but um, 
it, it was just weird because now there were so many different steps that we had to take throughout our shift while still trying to be that fine dining, you know, yeah. scale. Yeah. So then kind of starting to transition through, like what, what was the, the <laughs> I'm like me talking too. about it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so close to being able to drink again. I'm like a few days away. I'm so ready. I'm You're ready. ready. <laughs> I bought some gin today at the grocery store. Oh, you're prepared. I'm Don't ready. cheat again. <laughs> uh, it's Friday. Okay, I might. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> um, I was okay. So, so, like, give me a visual of like on your shift. What did the restaurant look like? Like, how many how many tables Table in between? Wise. Or like, how is the service? You know, like, where are where you standing? Stand? So All there are no um. So the tables, yeah, when you, when you walk in, they didn't move any tables except for the bar. So the bar seats and the bar top, they removed all the bar top chairs. They have to be six feet apart. So there's really only, I mean, we have a large bar, but it's not crazy long, the bar top. Mm -hmm. So there's only like three stools up there. So um, all That's the bar- That's interesting that you mentioned that because in uh, my city, bar, bar tops have to be closed completely. Yeah, it's different, it's different per county. So it's, that's another crazy thing. I'm like, if other counties are doing it, it's still the USA. Like, what's the point? <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so, but all the bar tables were removed um, just because bars a lot more crowded. So we completely removed that. They brought extra tables into the bar. So it's now part of the dining room. Okay. Um, Yes. And then, so the tables, they did not remove any tables. We can't remove our booths. So the booths are still the same, but what they did is they put black linens on every other table and it's like mapped out perfectly to where, you know, mm. there's space between. So, gotcha. so they did really good on that part. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I think moving tables would have make, made it a little bit more difficult for us and just look weird. So I think they mm -hmm. did a really good job on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then what was your other question? The, like, how is the service part of your, 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 your server? Like oh. how, how did that change? Or like from spacing to like mm -hmm. stuff? Cause I, I want to compare it. my experience going to a restaurant mm -hmm. in my city. Oh, but I, I want to hear what you okay. have to say first. So First, going to the table, there's no, we don't have to stand in a certain spot. We don't have to keep our distance. Um, there's no guidelines on that really, because if you think about it, I wouldn't be able to serve them if I had to keep a distance. You know what I mean? Like I have to touch, I have to yeah. drop stuff. I have to. Yeah. Because so you're already thing. holding their food. Like, exactly. So what's exactly. the difference? <laughs> exactly. That makes no sense. Um, so there's no guidelines on that. So that's good. So we just stand at our table normal. We have, we wear gloves, of course, we wear our mask and all that stuff. The service part of things was fantastic. The interaction with the guests. I mean, I, I work in the restaurant industry. I, I live for the communication with the guests and for that type of experience. Like I yeah. love conversations. I love getting to know people. And I just, I absolutely love, that's why I've been in the restaurant industry my whole life. It's basically, I've, you know, been my only job ever. Um, well, so it's been great. The guests are not changing whatsoever. Like they're obviously they came to the restaurant. I was afraid that some of the guests were going to be like afraid if I got to them too close or they weren't going to let me like, like mm -hmm. crumb their table or certain things like that. But everything's been so fantastic. And I'm going to knock on wood because I work this weekend again. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it stays great. Um, but everyone was more like wanted to have a conversation with you. And it was great. It was great, great, great. Because you, I've missed that for so long and they want to know how it's been for you. And I want to know how it's been for them and you know, what, it, what it feels like to be back and all this stuff. They're just so much more questions now that, they, and they talk to you. So mm -hmm. it's fantastic. That's awesome. The experience I wanted to compare it with was I went to this restaurant, um, that's like in the down, not in the downtown area, but like in this, like kind of like outdoor strip restaurant mall area. Um, and so like it had outdoor seating and indoor seating. And honestly, I've never been to this restaurant before. 
Um, so like, I don't know if it's always like this or if this was new, but other than having like a lot of, so they didn't, the one thing that was like the most frustrating from my like sit down experience, I still wasn't mad about it because like, I know that they probably didn't have that much time before right. they started opening and stuff. But the, the most frustrating part was like they had their regular menu, but so many of the items weren't available. Oh. And so I just wish that they had like, even if they had like printed it on a random piece of paper and it was like straight up from a printer, I would have rather been able to see what they actually had so that I didn't, I like, me and my stepdad picked four different items in a row that they were like, okay. And then they came back and were like, sorry, we don't have that. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry, we don't have that. Okay. And I'm like, I just want to order so that I can like talk. Cause I don't really want to talk to you over and over again yeah, about right. the same thing. So like, again, we didn't like complain Talked or anything. It, and like, it was so fine, but that was like the one thing that I like just wish had been a little bit better organized wise. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then the other thing, okay, so the bar was closed, the bar top. Yes. And they didn't have any actual servers. So like you had to go inside and order at the bar and then you go, go sit down and then they bring you your food. Okay. And I don't know, again, cause I've never been to that restaurant. I don't know if that's normally how it works or if that's how. The new this, protocol base. Yeah. And then the other thing that I definitely noticed was that the city that I was in, the rule is supposed to be they should be at 25% capacity. They were definitely at 100% capacity oh, minus the bar tops. What? Every single chair was full. Dang. Like, and it's a small restaurant. Like we, we picked a good spot or like we were given a good spot because yeah. we were outdoors in the corner. So we weren't worried about it. But like mm -hmm. I was looking in and I'm like, all of the chairs are, op are taken. Dang. And they're not like spaced out because mm -hmm. in that area, it's like a super small, all the restaurants are very small. Right. So that was interesting. Um, but it felt really like it was like a breath of fresh air to feel like you're normal again. Sense of normalcy. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So I, I, I want to touch base on what you said about the whole menu items thing, because I experienced the same thing as a server. Mm -hmm. So one of the most frustrating things that I explained in the beginning is that they didn't give us any warning of what menu items were going to be gone and mm -hmm. the prices drop because a lot of the times we get questions, oh, how much is this? And you know, we're supposed to know that. And so it's a, it was just a little embarrassing because even though my restaurant, we did print out new menus. So there was menus of everything we had and all that. A lot of items were gone though, or like they brought in some lunch menu items or bar menu items and I don't work lunch or in bar. So it's just a little confusing on that sense. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes like regulars, for example, they would ask for this sauce that they always get or this steak that they always get, but they have a menu in front of them. Right. And they're just mm -hmm. reading to me off things, you know, as if they read it off the menu and I'm just rolling with it. You're not thinking yeah. anything because I didn't get any warning besides a quick glance before my shift, but Lord knows how that goes. It's not going to stay in my head, especially right. in my first shift when I'm having an anxiety attack. It's just not happening. Right. Well, and to, so, so like such a big difference, like how are, you can't be expected to memorize exactly. that like 40 of the 50 sauces mm -hmm. are gone or whatever. So exactly. I can't be expected that. Well, you've worked with Aloha. All the restaurants that I have have been Aloha. Super easy process of, you know, Making an item not available is so stinking easy. I've been a manager. I've been a server. I've done it all. It's easy. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that with anything. So as a get, as, with anything. So as a guest, they're ordering. I'm writing it down as a server. I go to the computer. I ring it in as normal. And then per usual, 25 minutes later, oh, we don't have that because that's when they are reading the chit. And so it was really embarrassing. Thank the Lord that I didn't get any main entrees. Most of the problems I had were sauces or like steak toppings or mm -hmm. um, sides, a lot of our sides we couldn't do. Um, they were doing a lot of things like, oh, people can only get sauteed spinach and button mushrooms together. They can't separate it because they're pre-portioned mm -hmm. for time-wise, which I get, but then they wouldn't tell us about that. So then they would get mad at the servers and I'm like, <laughs> no. I'll be back and I'll find out, but don't yell at me right now because I don't deserve that. So that yeah. was, so I, I 
can touch. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And as a server, it's so embarrassing. And nobody, right. you know, I think right now people are being understanding. Mm -hmm. And I'm just being upfront and honest. I am so sorry. I don't, I don't know of our menu changes. This mm -hmm. is what I do have to offer for you, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. And that's essentially like the, not the server. Cause we didn't have a server, but she was like kind of oh. the host girl okay. um, who was that's helping right. coming back and forth with the, like, sorry, we don't have this. Mm -hmm. Um, she was also upfront about the fact, like, sorry, we opened today and Given no they didn't, like, some of it, some of it she was saying, like, it's going to come back next week, but we just didn't prep anything because we didn't have, we opened we the day know. of, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, some, like, the one of the things I wanted was, like, the pretzel bites, but they, they usually would prep those at night for the next day, and, like, they didn't have anything prepped because they weren't open yesterday. Okay, right. So, um... So it was like things like that. And she was just like straight up about it. I'm like, it's totally fine. I'm, I'm like, I am frustrated because it's frustrating, but I'm not frustrated with you or the business even. It's just like the whole world, you know? Right. right. And like, not we were, fault. yeah. And we were super chill about it. It's not like we were even outwardly showing our frustration. We were like, it's fine. No big deal. You know, let, let me get some garlic fries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Dang. Yeah. Well, it's good to know that I'm not the only restaurant or server experience. No, no. And I, I knew I wasn't, but yeah. yeah. And like, that's the only one that I went to. So I don't have like days of, you know, multiple different experiences or anything, but. Right. It's very right, weird right. for sure. Yeah. What about your day two? Did it change at all? Day two was definitely better going in. I went in with a way more positive mindset and like, at least I know, you know, what's happening now and the gist of things, um, mm -hmm. versus the first day, which totally freaked me out. So it was, it was so much better. So, mm -hmm. so, so much better. Yeah. Yeah. And I then you mentioned you wanted to get into like tips and stuff like that. Yes. Well, so before that, let's talk about side work because okay. side work is very stressful without having a busser, without having a host, without having an expo who usually, you know, does the line, the host do all the menus and the table and the Parson tables, what they're called, mm -hmm. tables sitting around the restaurant. And then, you know, the bussers, they prep the butter, they clean the bread station, they do all of the silverware and everything. Well, now that's all on us. So the first night I was working, it, the first night I, I started to work, that was the first night they had, I think, 10 servers. Every night prior to that, we had opened on Memorial Day. So there, they only scheduled three to four servers. Mm. So no one had, it hadn't been so busy yet to where they needed to really like okay let's figure out side work and so mm. friday was the first night um it was a little stressful because now that there was so much added on nobody really knew what to do like okay who's gonna do like we need to divide everything up and add it to the side work that we already have and make it happen but then you have your managers dealing with now like labor is a hundred times more important to them you know so now they're sitting here yelling at, you know, this server, this many servers, okay, get off my clock, get off my clock. And now that they're all, now they're, I mean, you never want to work off the clock, but it's a thing. It happens. Some servers don't want to leave without doing something and feel bad about it. So they'll stay, you know, a little bit to help out, especially now that times are a little bit different, mm -hmm. but that just, they were like, no, get, they, they like monitored you, like get off, leave the building, stop working. So then it would leave so much more work for everybody else. And it was, it was just a hot mess. Yeah. I was there that, in my first night. I was there until 1230, I think. Ugh, yeah. It that always crazy. really bugs me when managers, like my experience in the restaurant is obviously not COVID related, but it always really bothered me from being somebody who was like off early to being somebody who was a closer. Mm -hmm. It always really bothered me when managers would make the earlier servers get off the clock without doing their side work because inevitably you're going to fuck up your labor anyway, because then yeah. your closers are going to stay late. And yep, so like, exactly. why not just have everyone do their equal share so that that way you, the labor is at least equalized. Cause like you're gonna, if, if this is the problem, if the problem is that you didn't have, you didn't give your servers enough time to do the other things, somebody's mm -hmm. going to have to do it. Exactly. And so, so 
why are you making that server go off the clock to not get overtime yeah. when this server is now going to add an extra 20 minutes to their overtime in order to do that person's work? Right. It doesn't make yeah. any sense to me. Exactly. No, I completely agree. And like I said, I've been on the manager standpoint. So 100%, like it's just nonsense. Yeah. So yeah, I was there a long time. There were the servers that, you know, finished their side work before, you know, stuff was even talked about, about dividing all the other extra stuff up and they would dip because their side work was done. So mm. there was about five of us that were there until 1230. And it sucked because I, I knew it was going to be a long day. I knew it was going to be stressful. I knew there was more stuff to do. But I told Andre, I was like, well, our restaurant closes at nine. Nine or 10? 10, because our normal close time is 11. Our restaurant closes at 10, so I might, like, I'm not the closer. I'm the one of the first ones in, so maybe, I don't know, though. And then, oh, I just felt, bad. I was like, this is nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because we were, we were going to film the next morning really early. Yeah. That was, like, our initial plan was to get up early Saturday morning and record and talk about the shift mm -hmm. yeah and talk about the shift and then I checked your location and I was like it's almost it was it was eleven thirty, I think when I checked your location and was like hey I'm gonna go ahead and set my alarm you're still at work so like let me know and then I went straight to bed so I didn't get your text message maybe it was like right at midnight because you texted me shortly after I think but I had already my phone like I put my text messages on silent, but I, mm -hmm. but like, if you called me for an emergency, it would answer right. or it would ring. So I didn't get it until the next morning. So then at six, when I woke up, I was like, oh, we're definitely not doing this. Not happening. <laughs> no, it's happening. I know. And I felt so bad, but I did not have it in me. I was, yeah. But I yeah. could feel that energy too. It was like, yeah. I wanted to make sure I was doing my part to like give all of the different options if it, we could make it happen. And like, yeah willing to, you know, do the editing or whatever to make it as smooth for you as possible because I knew you were stressed out about yeah. going back. Um, and, like, the second that you voiced that you didn't want to do it and you wanted to skip a week, that's totally fine. Like, yeah, we've, we've now done this for almost three months and we haven't had to skip a week yet. It's fine. I know. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it was needed. It was, it was a yeah. perfect time to do so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, so next would be the tips. Mm -hmm. Tips. It's a stressful topic right now because the managers don't really have any answers for us. The first night I was there, so we actually did have an expo, which we usually tip out 1%. So at the end of the night, the managers are doing all of it because we are now considered a tip pool restaurant. So all between all the servers and the two bartenders that are on, pardon me, but that is it. So I mean, we don't have a host. They're not splitting it. They told us we're not having an expo or runner. They're not splitting it. And so I was really confused and I was in the office and I was asking one of the managers, I'm like, so we'll backtrack. They don't want us filling anything out on our checkout. Usually we would write in, you know, what credit card tips were, how many cash tips, what we're tipping out and then sign. All they want us to do is sign it, give it to them. If there's cash, we staple the cash with it and give it to them and they'll do all the paperwork at the end of the night because we're tip pulling. But I was like, okay, well, how much am I tipping out, you know, Olivia? She worked tonight as expo. Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, are you, is it coming out of a, is she in the pool? Cause that's a heck of a lot of money for her. I don't think that's fair. Oh, I don't know okay, well, when you decide what you're going to do, are you going to tell us? Well, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I'm like, okay, this is really freaking frustrating. Really yeah. frustrating because this is my money and I need to know because I'm still trying to qualify for unemployment and I have to do it. Granted, I still have about two weeks before I entered that week. I think I'm a week now. So I had time to, you know, get all the information, but I was so frustrated in the moment. Well, one of the servers, Brandon, was in the room. He was one of the servers that had been working since Monday when we opened. And he was, and he was in there listening and overhearing. And I asked another question. I said, okay, so what about cash tips? Are we, are we giving it all to you at the end of the night? And then you're putting it in an envelope the next morning and we're getting it on our next shift? Or how's, what's happening? I don't know. I was like, and so I watched him just shove 
all the money into the, into the, um, the safe. And I was like, uh, and then Brandon decided to chime in. He's like, honestly, Bailey, I've worked since Monday. Every single day there has been cash tips and I don't have a single penny of any of it yet. And I was like, that's a whole week. This is not, usually I would get cash tips and walk home with it. Like that's what helps with things at home and what I got to pay for. This is, doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. So yeah. that's then like throughout my shift, my anxiety had like calmed down and then it started to peak back up again. Cause I was like, this isn't like I'm working for money right now, but I'm still trying to also get money from unemployment. This isn't helping. What yeah. is, I need answers. I get that you guys didn't like, this is all in my head. I was like, I get that you guys didn't get any information and you weren't given a full 24 hours before we even opened our doors, you know, when our yeah. stay home order got released. But this is stressful. This is stuff you should have figured out for the three months we were closed. I mean, obviously you knew we were going to open sometime. Yeah. So preparing like, okay, there are probably going to be rules. Maybe you didn't know the rules yet, but you had to anticipate it. Yeah. And then like deciding, especially with the fact that like, uh, th there's no way, like if I could have thought about it and I'm not even in the service industry anymore, if I could have thought about the fact that like all of these servers all went home, they all got furloughed, there's no way that it's just going to like, boom, surprise, now we're all back to work and everything is hunky-dory. Like exactly. you're going to have to have a, some sort of rollout with mm -hmm. bringing some servers back first, then more and more. Yeah. Because assuming that pe people are also not going to want to come out or that there are going to be rules not allowing them to come out. Mm -hmm. So if all of those things are something I could think about, yeah, well, then you should have been able to think about it as a company so that you could prepare for, okay, if they're going to switch over to pull tips, well, what does that look like? Like, how are you breaking that down? Give me a diagram. Yeah, I want yeah. to I want and know. I, and they exist out there. Like, I personally don't like pull tips I think overall the experiences I've heard from people who have worked in both I've worked most, in a pull tip restaurant it's stressful yeah and most people say that it's not fair and mm -hmm. that in general well it depends on how you view it it does but if you're looking at it from the same lens that most people do with restaurants is like okay my service like my service is what you're paying for so if I'm a better server or a worse server then that's my money that I either get or don't deserve, you know? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's, it's, it's stressful. So I'm sorry to anyone that I work with. If you're listening to this, I don't like it. My first night back, I made $500 and I looked at the thing and other people are making like a hundred, a hundred bucks. I'm like, I don't, I walked that night with like two something. I'm like, this isn't, Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's whatever. So you did still walk with money or you mean eventually they told you how much you were going to So what I did because I, I wanted to write it all down. I wanted all the information. I'm, I'm jotting it in my calendar about mm -hmm. how much I made and all that. So what I did was the next day I worked. So the next day I went in and that was the first thing I did. I went into the office and said, okay, how much did we make? I need to know the credit card tips and the cash tips. I want it separated. I don't want you to jumble it together. Um, and then same thing on Sunday, I didn't work. So I texted, I found out, you know, on Sunday night, okay, who's going to, who's the opening manager tomorrow? Um, so that I can text and Allie said, Oh me, I'll text you and let you know. He said, okay, perfect. So she texted me and let me know. Same thing, credit card, cash. The reason why I'm doing credit card and cash. And I told one of, uh, I told Kristen, cause she was like, she called me this week. How much should we make? And I told her it all, but I said, but for your shifts now, like find out credit cards and cash separately. The reason why I did that is because when they decide finally to give us all of our cash tips, I want to make sure it's the right amount for each shift when I total it all up, because I have a feeling that they're just gonna, I just, I don't see them doing it. Like just totaling all the week's money, dividing it between X amount of servers and call it a day. Mm -hmm. I don't see them doing that because that does not make any sense. Mm -hmm. but a part of me is like just in case like I want yeah. my full amount that I earned so Every they're saying that they're gonna give you the cash tips not pulled like like no it's gonna be pulled but I'm afraid that they're not doing it shift by shift oh, oh they're doing it week they're by doing week. it I'm afraid that they're going to end up because I mean, come on, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Why? Well, and that's how a lot of pool tips work is no, that if so you were irritating, 
yeah, and that it, this is this is why like we we could honestly have a whole episode about cool tips, but like there are some restaurants who cool tip, and even if you work Monday through Friday morning shifts, you're gonna make more yep, in your because tips because you're, mm-hmm. you're working more hours, even though the biggest money makers are Friday and Saturday nights. So right. you could work Friday and Saturday night at night and probably make more money than somebody who's working Monday through Friday AMs. Yeah. Yep. But in, in not pool, but if you're working pool tips, then it's based on seniority hours yep. and other Absolutely. things that I don't necessarily know. And so it, it, yeah. this is Which why is, people well, argue that it's not fair, but yeah. there's a, there's the other opinion that like, we shouldn't even be a tipped, like restaurants shouldn't be tipped anyways. Like, make the wage fair and bit more yeah. and pay hourly and then you won't get there. There's a lot, there is research out there that talks about how like um, basically like the whole theory behind tips mm-hmm. is that like you'll work harder if you're making your money yeah. versus the other way around. But what they see is that people are going to make, people are going to be either shitty employees or good employees, regardless of if they're working for their own individual yeah. money or not. Yeah. So like there's, there's like lots to talk about. It's, it's a really fascinating thing. Um, there's a, there's a documentary that I watched about it. Um, and they compared a bunch of different like locations in the States because like California, we still pay minimum wage to servers plus they get tips. Whereas yeah. in places like Alabama, the minimum wage goes down and they are only paid like $3 an hour plus tips. So like that is a whole different thing where so that's, that's how, ridiculous. That's how New Mexico was. When I worked at the claim jumper in New Mexico, it was, we were a tip hole restaurant and it all came, it was into our checks and all of that. We got tip, the cash we kept on our own, but the credit card tips that was all divided and all that um Mm -hmm. but it was between everyone everyone the bartender the cocktailers the host the 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 runner the servers every human being besides the cooks and the managers in that building so it was it was rough so Mm -hmm. but yeah um hourly was like seven bucks I think if I remember correctly it was seven dollars and then Mm -hmm. yeah also just California's freaking expensive yeah yeah, definitely. So yeah. All right. Well, do you have any like final okay, well to to start wrapping it up, I guess my question is do you have any worries or like hopes for working this weekend? Like whether things that are changing whether there might be changes or like whatever. It's kind of open. I just hope that there's a little bit more of a system from everybody. Like, I hope that everyone is on the same page. Um, You know, last week, everyone went in blind. This week, at least everyone who's on the, I think I researched it, everyone who's on the schedule this weekend has already worked. So I'm hoping that that helps the shift out, helps the flow of the shift, helps the knowledge that everyone has because they've already experienced it. Um, so that's it, I guess the flow and like the system and everyone being on the same page, I'm positive it'll happen. So I'm hoping that the Aloha system will have things unavailable that are unavailable. Me too. The, so my general manager, the night of, before he left on Friday, my sure first shift, he told a couple of us, like, text me the details. Like, don't tell me cause I'm not going to remember. And I'm walking out the door right now text me so I have it. I'll write it down, transfer it to my notebook. Well, just any, any commentary you have, whether it be good, whether it be bad, just send me it so I can get a little insight. Mm-hmm. And so I, I sent him a couple things, you know, one about side work, about the tips and all that stuff. So hopefully mm-hmm. like it yeah. helps yeah, to get definitely. some questions or, I mean, it's been a whole week since he's gotten those messages. So hopefully it'll help. And I come back to a little bit better of a system, like I said. Yeah. And you work tonight, right? I do work tonight and tomorrow. Nice. Well, hopefully. (sighs) (laughs) I think it's good. What time is it? (laughs) Oh, Oh, yeah. No, it's okay. Although it is an early shift. Because we're closing early, like my end time is like 
three tomorrow and four today. So mm. a little bit different. Yeah. Nice. We found a quote. This is from one of the protesters in Minnesota from Bowties and Books' Instagram um, with their permission to share on her Instagram, which is public. Um, and it says, don't be weary. It's a time for a whole overhaul of this. We all have many roles to play. And I like this quote because I know that I've been struggling with feeling like I'm not doing enough. But as this protester is saying, like, we all have many roles to play. So if what you can do is protest, then go protest. If what you can do is go donate, go donate. If what you can do is go share information and, like, be spreading word about information, then do that. If what you need to do is educate yourself, then do that. Like, mm -hmm. there are so many different aspects of this. And you can do more than one all at once as well. Like, you don't have yeah. to only do one to, yeah, do the other also. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. It's very powerful just because I feel like it's not all, like – even though this is about how, you know, Black Lives Matter and that's what this movement is about, it's like everyone needs to come together for it or else nothing's going to happen. And there's already been a lot of like, I mean, a lot of bad has happened, but there's been a lot of good from all this, you know, from the movement. So mm -hmm. it's strong. Yeah. The impact is, yeah. Yeah. As of today, uh, as of the time that we're recording this right now, some things that have come about because of the protests or since the protest, however way you want to look at it, is mm -hmm. Officer Chauvin, the man who was kneeling on George Floyd's neck. His, uh, he went from not being charged to being charged with uh, first uh, third-degree murder, and now, now he second. is charged with second. Mm -hmm. And the other three officers that were there and involved have now also been charged with um, being accomplices. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, Brianna Taylor, who oh, was... Oh, today is her birthday. Yeah, today is Brianna Taylor's birthday. Um, and she was shot eight times by police officers in her own bed while she was sleeping. Um, mm -hmm. Her case has now been reopened. So nothing, no one's been charged yet. But the fact that it's reopened, like we did that. The movement yeah. did that. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that this doesn't just like blow over, you know, once this this week is over or people that have muted their page, like we said in the beginning, I hope that it doesn't end there because, because how long this has gone on and how much people are pushing it and showing the importance of it, like many more things are coming about, you know, and I think mm -hmm. that that's awesome. So. Yeah, I agree. Keep it going. One last update is that Ahmad Aubrey's mm -hmm. uh, killers, the three yes. men that were involved, the uh, court has now moved their case into the Supreme Court, which basically means that the initial judge has found that there is enough evidence, evidence. to like move the case forward yeah. and not drop it. So that right. is one step in the right direction, many yes. steps in the right direction. So we're seeing so, things happen. Yeah, I love it. Keep doing it. Like Cassie said, whatever way you can talk about it via you know your social media plat platform all the above just keep it going because it'll help a lot mm -hmm. yeah. and read and like yeah, watch educate. and all yeah. of that not just this week but like all the time like yeah there's there's some great stuff on netflix uh when they see us is about the uh central park five um uh, there's another one called 13th which is about the 13th amendment and how like we still see a systematic racism in our systems all the time right now today yeah. um there's a lot out there i'm also doing a giveaway right now on my own twitter which i think by the time this comes up it'll be over but i'm doing a giveaway for a book that is written by the man who is um representing the george floyd families the george representing the floyd family is what i'm trying to say i'm sorry mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah there's a lot out there to check out yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. yes yes okay all right with that no i think that's, that's it, it. Okay. cheers cheers